Okay, this week's Ion MPI brought to you by DigiKey and Ada Fruit is from CNK. Lady Ada, what is this week's Ion MPI? This week's Ion NPI is for the CNK ENC Optical Rotary Encoder. Um, I always love to show people how to make their products more reliable. Um, one of the things about doing maker electronics is like I get to work with a lot of low cost components, um, but that makes me very well aware of what um, the limitations are of low cost components and when you want to step it up and use something a little nicer. Uh, so this week's product is a very beautiful photo of the um, optical encoder with a little JST-SH connector as well. So this is uh, a rotary encoder. There's, I think, a 16 and a 24 um, pulse per rotation version. And uh, they use an optical sensor inside instead of a mechanical sensor. Um, and this makes it really good for, um, you know, the typical applications are like, um, automotive, industrial, test equipment, and medical equipment. And I think these are actually, you know, pretty good examples of when you want to use an optical encoder because I actually have a, um, my uh, old tech scope that I got, you know, now it's 15, 20 years ago, um, but the rotary encoder on it has gotten really flaky. And the rotary encoder is the, the one that you may use, this channel one, uh, zoom one. And so it actually really makes it like kind of sad to use um, the oscilloscope because this rotary encoder is busted because it's a mechanical rotary encoder, not an optical one. And so if you're basically, if you're working on something that's gonna be like more than a thousand bucks, uh, go with an optical encoder and not a mechanical one because you don't want to have like your very nice industrial or medical or test equipment uh, product fail because of like a $2 mechanical component going bad. Um, so a lot of people know rotary encoders, uh, you know, they kind of, they've been around for a bit, but like, I think the iPod classic is what a lot of people think of when they think of rotary encoders. Um, and I even have a, a, a click wheel encoder that I can show cause it's a really good way to understand how, um, rotary encoders function. The most common rotary encoders people tend to use are sort of the PEC 11 style. Um, these are five, five or six pin. Uh, mechanical rotor encoders, they're very inexpensive. They're like a dollar or two. Uh, they solder directly into the PCB. Um, they have a little uh, D-shaft knob. And um, the way they work as, is as you twist them, the common pin gets connected, disconnected from the two side pins in a gray code. And by keeping track of these pulses, uh, you can tell whether it's going forward or backwards um, and how many times it's been clicked. Um, oh, sorry, can you go back one? Uh, so actually, let me go to the overhead because this is where I was going to do my overhead show off. Okay, so this is your standard, uh, you know, PEC 11 type encoder. Um, so you've got the shaft and, you know, the nice thing is unlike a potentiometer, it goes all the way around with about 20-ish pulses, uh, clicky detents uh, per rotation. So these are often actually, you know, you'll, you'll probably have one on your stereo or in your car um, to, or uh, any other device where you have to kind of scroll through something um, because you can rotate kind of forever and it's good for, um, you know, you can go one detent at a time to slow down or, you know, mechanically you can kind of spin it very fast um, to scroll down uh, quickly through a list. And um, like I mentioned, uh, you know, this is, uh, these two pins are for the button. There's a little um, push button. But the, the rotary encoder part that people are familiar with is this three pin uh, set up here where these two pins connect and disconnect from the center pin um, as it rotates. So that's that's all good in everything. Um, and this is a, um, a click wheel uh, breakout that we have. And so, you know, this rotates and clicks around and I removed it so you could see what's going on. Inside, there's this little, you know, leaf spring contact. And you can see it's got these little, like, touch pad, like, bendy parts that come down. And um, as this rotates, you see there's a little uh, pattern in um, cut into the, the bottom contacts. And as this rotates, it connects and disconnects. And like that connection disconnection is how it can, can count um, the rotations, which is wonderful, right? But here's the problem. And here's also why the, the touch wheel, the click wheel isn't used. Now it's it turned into a capacitive wheel on the iPod is these little um, copper contacts you know, they're rated for, you know, let's say they're really good quality. They're rated for, oh, you know, 500,000, maybe a million, rota you know, um, contacts. Um, that's a lot for a button. You don't usually press a button that many times, but it's really easy to spin a rotary encoder around a lot. And every time you rotate it, that's 24 times two contacts. So it's like 50 contact rotations. 
let's say it's rotated 10 times a day because it's something that's being used often. You do the math, and I did the math. It's basically three to five years you're likely to have a contact failure. Um, and again, it's a downer, especially if it's a solder in type because to rework these is a real pain. Like you have to desolder and it's not easy. Um, this one even had a uh, mechanical um, tabs that I removed to make this breadboard friendly. But it's like, it's a rework job. It's not, it's not something that you can use or service. It's not even a service center job. You have to usually send it to an expert who can desolder and repair, um, which is why I've been, you know, I've been waiting around to, to fix my, um, the rotary encoder of my, uh, my oscilloscope. Um, so it's nice about the optical encoders is it doesn't have that mechanical part because this is a, this is a common thing. If you have old stuff with rotary encoders, even if there's no dust that got into it, the contacts will eventually fail. With an optical encoder, it uses an LED and two sensors or a sensor and two LEDs instead. So there's no contact failure. Um, so they're much, much more durable. Like you don't have to worry about 50,000, 100,000 rotations. I mean, it's gonna wear out like the mechanical bumps before anything electrical fails inside. And in addition, this has a uh, user replaceable or at least service center replaceable um, JST SH component. You can plug it in and unplug it um, very easily to uh, swap out the component, uh, which is what this part is. Uh, so just uh, be aware you'll need to get a separate cable for this um, to plug it in. They suggest, uh, you yeah, know, this is the, the part number and um, Digikey has the cable in stock. You can get the cable and then you can have it plug into your setup. So these are very nice. They're not going to fail on you after a couple years. Um, definitely for automotive, for medical, for test equipment, anything that's like if you don't want to have to deal with them sending it in for repair after three to five years, and a lot of products that are on the higher end do have service contracts, or people expect quality. If you're, if you're buying a $4,000 oscilloscope, you want it to last a long time, and it's a real bummer if it, if it fails because of a, of a cheap rotary encoder. So get an optical encoder. They're very nice. Um, they work exactly the same, and uh, they won't fail on you. So right. check out the CNK part in stock at DigiKey. And that's high on MPI. Hi, I'm MPI.